How's it going ladies and bruises, I'm Bobby Sixkill and welcome back to Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it's time for us to jump back in, do some bucket endings and potentially some other endings. I was thinking that seeing we couldn't get into the red and blue door with the bucket, perhaps there's something else in there that we need to check out. So we might have to go back and do those endings again. If they're the same as the old ones, I'll just cut them out, but otherwise, I just booted the game and for some reason it's saying that he wants to say something. So before we get started, can I just say something? Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you've booted up the game. A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 o'clock, call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock and I appreciate that. That's how I know that you care about this experience. You're paying attention. I don't even know, have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see this screen, just set the clock to your favourite time. <laughs> Go ahead, pick whichever time you want. Even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. Alright, I'll let you get back to the video game now. <laughs> Thanks, game. Alright. So, yeah, I'm thinking we should jump in and do the suicide ending with the bucket. Can we do the phone ending with the bucket? I'm not, I can't remember if we can or not. Alright, let's go. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided ah. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a, a good bucket, a strong bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. Indeed. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Come on, bucket. Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. No, the bucket was right. We Stanley just took the in door a, in, in a his hurry. to go back to the meeting room. All right. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. A cargo right. lift. Yes, go there. But Stanley feared that any path he walked <laughs> might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death. That they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. Together forever. Me and Bucket. Alright, my bad. We've done that one. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. The Bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those. Stanley clutched the Bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the Bucket calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. I talk, but the narrator doesn't shut up when you move first. No, <laughs> said the bucket. <laughs> Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. I need to know the how to get down lift. Here. Yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. How do I get to that? Hmm. I don't know. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. What about those doors up Stanley there? Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. As you do. I mean, you don't, you don't deny the bucket's authority. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. This is not the done thing, you know. Now pick up the phone. Whoa, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. <laughs> uh, can't you see? Um, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, <laughs> I bet there is. sitting right here. Yep, everything's on YouTube. What is comedic timing? <laughs> what is comedic timing? How does it work? 
How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? I doubt it. Thankfully, the answer to <laughs> all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. Let's do it. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. <laughs> Why would I These do that? These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. <laughs> Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. Burrito. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even doubled look so over evil? in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just troopers? as our children must do after <laughs> us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. This is totally Starship Troopers. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. I agree. So with that in mind, <laughs> I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Okay. Come along, let's head back. Okay. At least we didn't break the game like the uh, original ending in there did. I see you put the fence around here again so I don't kill myself. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. Hilarious. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, I feel better who knows about where we'd be right now. Mm. Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. It's true. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Yeah, that always uh, that always wrecks the comedy. Overthinking things. Engaging your brain. It's risky business. You never know what might happen. That's why I keep mine turned off firmly at all times. Here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Um. What? We're back at the phone already. Apparently. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. <laughs> There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. 
What an egregious mistake. I don't think that's how it works. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... <laughs> yeah, I'm Here sure. we go. You ready? Oh, God damn it. <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. What if I actually do enter the door on the left? No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, <laughs> leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. I'm sorry to hear that. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Little Are bit. you proud? <laughs> Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Sounds like Stewie Griffin. You are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not. It's very shame. funny. Is it the delivery? No, I like it. Pale with shame. <laughs> pale with shame. Pale. What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so mental. I think I saw it playing guitar. No. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I just I'm no good at these jokes. I noticed. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. I can do with and another one. Will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Gotta get your title back. Let's see. Let's see. Well, that's that ending. All of his co-workers were gone. Can we get out the window what could again? It mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Oh, yeah. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he oh. couldn't find a trace oh, of I didn't his co-workers. Shit. At first, Stan. Hang on. I need the bucket. All right. All of his co-workers were gone. Can I go get the bucket? Then what jump out the mean? window. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, it's but true. Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Here we go. Very. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. I love you, bucket. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yes. Whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done. We've it. escaped. We've escaped from that <laughs> dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, oh, bucket. and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself, perhaps if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket <laughs> revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... Uh-oh. 
My God, Stanley. We made it the bucket. You did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Thank you. Come, let's restart the game, <laughs> and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. We know the bucket's going to be there as soon as we get back. That was great. Stanley had never seen the office this That was a great evening, lit. I love that. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. Come on, bucket. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Sure. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. We can do the self-destruction ending the with the bucket. When we uh, turn on the mind control device. What ones are we still missing? Still missing three. A large room, lots of boxes, stairs, somewhere with both red and blue. Hmm. Large room with lots of boxes and stairs. This is stairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley it's and the, the only walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping. There we go. That's what we needed. Let's see what happens with the bucket on this one. We need to do those two that we need to, that we can get to, that we have to do without the bucket as well. Need to get back to that. Large room, lots of boxes. Where could that be? Oh, it's probably that one that we, um, we saw sitting on that scaffolding. I still don't know how to get to that though. I'm sure we'll figure it out at some point. Oh, we could do that one with the computers as well. This one, awaiting input. I can't do it now, obviously, but, you know, that one. Come on, Bucket. There's much bucketing to do. We could go, uh, you know, bail out some water from something. Perhaps. Milk a cow. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many uses for a bucket. I guess. <laughs> well, this has stairs. Maybe it's up here. It did say stairs. This place is all about stairs. Isn't that right, bucket? Not seeing anything, though. One more? One more. Ah, here we go. Escape pod launch bay. Let's go, Bucket. We're free again. Oh, I can't see. It's very dark. I'm just gonna walk backwards. <laughs> Oh. Oh man, that's enough room for you, Bucket. I guess you're going without me. Shh. Goodbye, Bucket. I'll always love you. Amazing how emotional you can make that. <laughs> Saying goodbye to my bucket. I mean, we've been through a lot together, us and Mr. Bucket. Anyway. <laughs> the meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Ever, ever again. 
Can you do that through multiple runs? I can't even remember if you can do the awaiting input thing in... If you have to do it in a single run, or have to do it in multiple runs. It's been so long since I played the original. I think you might be able to do it in multiple runs. But, yeah, whatever. We're going to leave Bucket behind today and go do the red and blue doors. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the f but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I mean, we could. I'm not going to, but we totally could. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It is incredible. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot I here. really want to know how to get I'm here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Mm -hmm. Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you. No, to show you something beautiful. No, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Ah, Give me a chance. There it is. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. Oh, I like Figlies. Figlies is what way better. What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Or Gazemilies? <laughs> now listen carefully, this is important. Oh, God. Stanley walked through the red door. Fine. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. Okay, I'm stopping. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Go on. Here. Let me show you. I hope this is a different ending to the original, but if it's not, well, I guess I can cut it out, I suppose. Although, the original endings are still great. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? What's this one? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? We just if see we, the no, stairs ones wait. and the box. Where are you going? This could be the stairs one. Stairs are here. Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. True. You're not wrong. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley. No! Oh, no. No, this no. This seems what like it's the doing, original Stanley? ending. Please, I'm asking you not to take oh, well. this away from It'll me. It'll be fast. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Uh, I'm a psychotic, clearly. <laughs> Stanley, let's go back to the other room. My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. I hate how slow we're getting from being crippled, I suppose. Oh well. Well, we'll try the blue door next. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. It's not my fault I'm a sociopath. All of his co-workers were gone. <laughs> Clearly. What could it mean? <laughs> Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right. Replacement bucket. So, 
That's good. Alright, we'll come back to that. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered. This was not the correct way to enter. I the know, I know. And Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, thank you. Appreciate it, but no, thank you. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. It must be this that gets us down here, maybe. Oh, man. Oh. That's how we do it. We're going to have to die again, huh? All right. Well, maybe not. Depends if it's that way. Should have brought my bucket. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, <laughs> you'll get the first one. And then the first number will equal the second number. And that will be it. Wow. We'll be different people by then. Mm. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Yeah, I'm worried about that, I must admit. I don't know if I could go on living like that. But who knows? Get up. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten what the path. Fuck? That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun. You're the narrator? You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each Main. and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, <laughs> you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. <sighs> now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. That's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> we still have to do the um, the red door. Let's Wait, get... Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Where's the third computer? I don't actually remember which one the third computer is. Suppose I should take the bucket just in case. Bucket in a gentle embrace, protective yet delicate, assertive yet compassionate. I don't want to miss out on the third computer. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. It must be the one in the reception area, right? Is this some kind of game? <laughs> stairs. Something to do with stairs. That is kind of the issue. That one. I've been all over the stairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, there it is. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. Thank you. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. That's true. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. Good. So I have other things to do. Come on, Bucket. You need to go find that next computer to activate. Is it this one? It is this one. We still got two more to do, though. 
Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Damn it. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. Can't remember, so. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. I mean, I had the right numbers, just in the wrong Stanley order. Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. For sure. Couldn't be anything else. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. We got this bucket. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. I trust the bucket. It's fine. Don't worry. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. We did this ending with the bucket, right? I think we did. I can't remember. I think we did. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. And we've done the uh, turn off the mind control thing with the, the Bucket. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, oh, it's okay, reassuring bucket. it that everything would be fine. I thought you were the reassurance bucket, I'm not the reassurance Stanley. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Have you betrayed me, bucket? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? Probably move These liquids. questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Stanley's feeble no! mind? No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Come on, bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labelled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Come on, Bucket. Let's, uh, take over the system. Because we already know that well, they won't let us they leave. Came to the but at the last second, the Bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. <gasps> the Bucket's the bag all Stanley along. Stanley gasped in horror had this been the bucket's plan all along to take over the machine and claim the power Damn for itself? You bucket. how could the bucket have betrayed him like this stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen birds <laughs> silly silly birds <coughs> the control buttons became active again um
Duck. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned <coughs> on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. <laughs> the mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. <laughs> of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. I feel good about and this. Stanley was happy. <laughs> oh, that was a great ending. All right. I'm not too sure how many more innings there are left to... to uh try and get to but we're gonna wrap this one up here probably got one more episode worth of uh, endings to find i would imagine hopefully but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching thanks for getting out for me and i'll see you in the next one